Little Blue Cold Dealer presents The Shadow. These half-hour dramatizations are designed to forcibly demonstrate to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Before The Shadow's adventure begins, here's advice everyone will profit by following. If you want to save yourself time, trouble, and money this winter, be sure to insist on blue coal when you order anthracite. The blue coloring on blue coal is the trademark of superior quality. It's your guarantee from the world's largest anthracite producer, the Glen Alden Coal Company, that blue coal will give you better heat at less cost. So don't gamble with ordinary anthracites. Play safe by insisting on blue coal by name. Call your blue coal dealer for your supply tomorrow. The Shadow, mysterious character who aids those in distress and helps the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the unseen voice belongs. The only one who knows the true identity of that master of other people's minds, the shadow. Today's story, Black Rock. Take off, Martin. And what a takeoff. <laughs> right straight to a watery grave. She only knew it. Listen, Ward, you better not let Burkett hear you shooting off your mouth like that. Nah, I ain't scared of that swindler. He ain't got nothing on me. Oh, no. Nothing at all, except that you're a pilot without a license who's been making his living flying smuggled dope. So what? Don't think I can't see what goes on. I know that Burkett swindled his stockholders out of a couple of million bucks. And now he's skipping in this plane. Well, what if he is? You're getting paid plenty, ain't you? Sure, sure. Oh, hello, Mr. Bacon. Is the plane ready to take off? Yeah. He's fueled to the limits. Fly 1,500 miles if necessary. The supplies are all loaded, too, boss. Well, you know our course. We're heading for Nova Scotia. Yeah. Mr. Burkett. Mr. Burkett. Harvey, what are you doing here? I followed you. Yes. Where are you going, Mr. Burkett? Well, what's that to you, Harvey? I happen to know that you're absconding with the company's funds. Now, see here, Harvey. Mr. Burkett, you can't do this. Think what will happen to me, to the stockholders, everyone. Harvey, I'm not running out on you. You don't know what you're saying. I do know what I'm saying. I know that in that suitcase you have $2 million of the company's funds. You made me president and I'm responsible for those funds. I'll be ruined. Ruined, do you hear? Now give me back that money. Let go of that bag, Harvey. Give it to me, I say. You're stealing the company's money. What? Martin, take care of him, will you? Give me Best that. and punk, shut up. I won't. I want that money. I want that money. Give it to him, Martin. <laughs> That'll stop that. Nice work, Martin. Throw him out of the plane. All right. Okay. Ah, all right. Now let's get out of here. So you cleaned out your company, huh, Burkett? Robbed your poor, dear, trusting stockholders. You're not supposed to know about this, Ward. Oh, no? Not even the two million you got salted in that suitcase? You were hired to pilot this plane, and that's all. So get the plane off the ground. Okay. As long as I get my cut. Don't worry, Ward. You'll get yours. Fog's rolling in thicker every minute. Aye. Right. What do you expect on the Grand Banks, mate? Hey, where do you reckon our position? About 200 miles due east of Cape Race, Captain. Wreckage off the port bow, Captain! Wreckage off the port bow! Wreckage off the port bow? I cut the engine, mate. Aye, sir. What do you make it, lookout? She's all vessel, Captain. Looks like the wing of an airplane. An airplane? Do you suppose it could be that plane that flew to sea four days ago, sir? Might be. Hey, there she is. 
Ease it off a bit. We'll drift down on it. Hi, Captain. Look, there's the plane's number on the wing, sir. Can you make it out? Uh, X-1752. X-1752. That's the plane, Captain. I remember the number. I heard a radio broadcast about her last night. So that's what happened to the poor devils. Lost their course and dropped into the sea. Look lively there, lads. Lend a hand and we'll haul that wing aboard. Aye, sir. Get a line ready, lads. Shall I get the dories over, Captain? Not in this fog. We'll cruise about. I have a notion we'll find no trace of the three poor devils that were aboard her. Poor devils? Rich devils, you mean, sir. Right. Burkett stole two million dollars from the poor stockholders of the company. Aye. All the money in the world will do them no good in David Jones' locker. Aye. The rest of the plane is on the bottom of the banks. And them rascals in it. Aye, mate. Lost. Stick my life on it. Lost forever. And two million dollars of poor people's money lost with them. Extra, extra, swindler's plane found in sea. Burkett and companions believe drowned. Paper, paper. Police see Frank Harvey, missing company president for questioning. Extra, extra. Lamont, do you mean that the poor man really had nothing to do with the money being stolen? Absolutely nothing, Margot. That's why we're driving down here. Frank Harvey is an honest man. He was set up as president of the company by Burkett. Harvey thought it was a legitimate investment house. Then why can't he tell that to the police? Because, unfortunately, that would never hold in a courtroom. As head of the firm, he's directly responsible to the people for their stolen money. Where did you say you'd meet him? He's hiding down by Miller's Creek. Is that right down this road? Yes, I think it's this third cottage here. Yeah, let's get out and see. All right, Lamont. Oh, there's someone in the window. He's waiting for us to come in. Yes, that's Harvey. We go in the side door. How long has he been hiding here? About a week, I believe. Mr. Cranston. Hello, Harvey. Uh, come in, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is Miss Lane, Mr. Harvey. How do you do? How do you do? I'm so glad you could come here, Mr. Cranston. Well, I hope I can be of service. Well, that's a pretty forlorn hope, I guess. What, with Burkett presumably at the bottom of the sea? Presumably, Mr. Harvey? Yes. You see, I can't make myself believe that he's dead. I'm inclined to agree with you on that. You are? Why, Lamont? Well, for one thing, Margot, their bodies were never found. Lamont, I don't like to be stubborn, but the Atlantic is a mighty big pond. Yes. But I also know that when Burkett planned his getaway, he wouldn't have figured on flying across the ocean in a plane with a cruising range of only 600 miles. They were flying to Canada and got off their course. Yes, that's true. No, Harvey. Ward, although crooked, was an excellent pilot. He was an expert navigator. He knew blind flying. Then, since you think they're alive, how did their plane crash 200 miles at sea? Fly itself? Fly itself? Margot, you've given me an idea. It's the only thing I haven't been able to figure out. Uh, what are the things you have figured out, Mr. Cranston? I'm afraid I can't tell you right now, but if they work, the missing money will be returned to the stockholders, and your name will be cleared, Mr. Harvey. <laughs> expect to find at the airport at this time of night, Lamont? I'd like to take a look around the hangar where Burkett kept his plane, Margot. Well, what can you learn there? I'm going to stake everything on a shot in the dark. There's no one in that hangar but the watchman. He doesn't know anything, or if he does, the police and the G-men didn't get it out of him. So how can you hope to... I'm going to ask him one question, Margot. How could a ghost airplane fly 200 miles and crash into the sea? And do you expect an answer from him? Not I. But the shadow does. Look. Look through those windows. Yes. There's the watchman. He's asleep. I won't wake him, Margot. It'll be easier for the hypnotic powers of the shadow to force his subconscious mind to answer the question. I'll wait out here, Lamont. In a few minutes, we'll know if Burkett really went to his death in the wrecked plane. <laughs> Mm. 
sleep soundly, Jeff Carson. Alone, mm. here in the empty hangar. Burkett. 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 Mm. That name troubles your sleep, doesn't it, Carson? Mm. Burkett. Mm. No. No, Carson. Mm. You mustn't wake up and sleep. Let your subconscious mind hear me. Mm. Mm. I am Burkett. Burkett. Mm. I am Burkett. Burkett. You are remembering, recalling the things I paid you to forget. Yes. I paid you, didn't I, Carson? Yes. You paid me thousand dollars. Why? Why did I pay you? So I wouldn't tell about the extra fuel tank. Yes, yes. Keep remembering, Carson. The automatic pilot. Sleep, sleep, Carson. Dream on. I won't tell anybody. I won't tell anybody about those long flights you took, Mr. Burkett. Where did I go on those trips, Carson? Well, hmm. Remember now. Hmm? Black Rock. Black Rock. No. No, I won't tell them. Why did I install an automatic hmm. pilot, Carson? Hmm. Why? To fly. Black Rock. Hmm. thousand miles and land. And then Ward. Hmm. Ward was to take the ship up and set the automatic pilot and bail out. So and, that's uh, it. A ghost plane flown by a robot pilot cruising seaward until mm, his gas ran out. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. is Black Rock, Carson? Mm. Where is Black Rock? Black Rock. Black Rock is 25 miles off the coast. Wait. Wait. What am I saying? <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? Don't move around. Shoot us. Shoot us. Shoot us. Getting near Black Rock, Lamont. Yes, Margo. I hope we reach it before it gets too dark to land the plane. You've come a long way since we left New York this morning. It's exactly 1,000 miles to Black Rock. And how far off the coast of Labrador? About 25 miles. Burke had certainly picked a secluded spot. Just a dot of an island on this map. Margo, hand me the glasses. I think I see land. Where, Lamont? Straight ahead. Yes, that's it, Margo. A loaf shaped Black Rock. There's supposed to be a small cove to the landward side. How can this seaplane land with all this ice in the water? Now, I've got to hope for enough open water, Margot. But, Lamont, if Burkett and his gang are on Black Rock, they'll hear the plane. Can't be helped. If it's possible to land, I'm going ashore tonight. You want me to stay in the plane? Yes. You'd better keep this rifle, in case they try to board the plane while I'm ashore. Rock gets larger as we get nearer. How will you find them? They may hide until we go. The shadow will find them, Margot. There can't be many places to hide. I don't see a sign of life, not even a hut or a tent. According to explorers' reports, there are several large sea caves. They may be using one of those. There's the inlet on the landward side, Lamont. It's easily free of ice. Yes, I see it. Hold on, Margo. I'm going to try to land in that open water. Heaven help us if we hit any pack ice. Get out the life preservers, just in case. This is it. You made it, Lamont. You made it. Yes. And now the shadow must do the rest. The shadow's adventure continues in just a moment. But first, here's news. Thousands of families in this section of the country are going to enjoy far better heat at less cost in their homes this winter. For they've stacked their bins with the finest American anthracite money can buy, blue coal. Why is blue coal actually better than other kinds of anthracite, Mr. Roberts? Well, blue coal is a medium, free-burning hard coal. Its square fracture shape permits more draft and allows every bit of blue coal to be burned up slowly and steadily right down to a fine, powdery ash. That's why blue coal is so much more economical. It gives you more useful heat. How about the care of the furnace with blue coal as compared to other anthracites, Mr. Roberts? Blue coal requires far less attention. It banks better and gives much longer firing periods. So homeowners, save money by ordering blue coal from your dealer tomorrow. His name is listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the words blue coal. And ask about blue coal's automatic heat regulator. It's a thermostat which controls your furnace dampers automatically. 
so that those at home can keep the house at the exact temperature they wish during the day by simply setting the thermostat control. A blue coal heat regulator costs but $18.95 plus a small installation charge. It will pay for itself in the time, trouble, and the amount of fuel it saves you. Leads to the coal. Hurry up. Hold that lantern higher, will you? I can't see. All right. That's better. Hey, you sure you know where Brickett hit that boat? Yeah. It's in that little cave right by the edge of the water. Keep that lantern up, will you? Want me to break my neck? Oh, if I hold it any higher, Brickett will see it. Well, let him see it. I'll kill him if he tries to keep us from getting off this blasted rock this yeah. time. Work it'll kill us if he catches us trying to get that plane in the cold. Hey, who do you suppose it is after us? What do we care? It's a plane, ain't it? Chance to get away from Brickett. Well, I ain't leaving without that money. Not after the way he starved us, kicked us around like dogs. All right, all right. We'll get the plane. Then we'll take care of Brickett. All right. Here's the coat. Look, I told you we'd find it, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. Come on. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, let's pull out to that plane. <laughs> oh, we got to get the... Shut up, Martin. Listen. I heard something like somebody laughing. Laughing at us. Ah, oh, you're crazy. It's the wind. <laughs> oh. You hear that? Somebody's close to us, watching us. Get down. Maybe break it. Hi. I heard it, too. Put out the lantern quick. It's no use. I'm not Burkett. You cannot hide from me in the darkness. Some guy from that plane. All right, come on into the light and be quick about it, fella. Cover him with your gun, Martin. I can't see him. I'm standing in the light, close to you. But you cannot see me. What do you want? I've come for you. It, it's the cops, Ward. It's the cops. They found it. No, it's not the police, Mr. Martin. <laughs> well, then, then who are you? You've been in prison, both of you. Haven't you ever heard of the shadow? Shadow? guy nobody's ever seen. Not, not the shadow. Not on this forsaken rock. The end of the world is not far enough to hide you from me. What? That voice. I've heard Khan's talk about it. It's him. He's here. There's been a slip. He's come for us. Yeah? All right. Forgetting this is another thing. Now, don't come near me, shadow. I'll drill you, even if I can't see you. I'll take you when the time comes. But first, I mean to get Burkett and the $2 million he stole and clear the name of Frank Harvey. Well, you can have Burkett, but you'll never get that $2 million, Shadow. Not one of you will escape. How did you find us? That watchman squealed, didn't he? I warned Burkett. Come on, Ward. we got to find Burkett. He'll know what to do. Yes, go to Burkett. Warn him the Shadow is here. Tell him you'll never leave Black Rock alive. Never live to spend the fruits of your crime. <laughs> What is the matter with you, Martin? Where have you been? Been around at the cove, watching that plane. Do you know who was in it? Yes, yes, of course I know. Just a girl. And she won't give us any trouble, I've seen to that. A girl? And he didn't come alone. I don't know what you fools are talking about. Who didn't come alone? The shadow. The shadow is on Black Rock. The shadow? Why, you're crazy. No, no, he's here. He said we'd never leave the island alive. Oh, how did the shadow know that we didn't perish with the plane? That watchman at the airport must have squealed. <laughs> so the shadow trailed us a thousand miles to this forsaken hideaway and played right into our hands. <laughs> What's so funny? What do you mean? Look over there. See who's gagged and tied to that cut. What? Look, he's got the girl. How did you do it? How did you get her out of the plane? I went out in the boat and I... Merely gave her the choice of coming ashore or having the plane's pontoons riddled with bullets. But the shadow was on the rock here, looking yeah. for us. Well, let him find us. We'll give him the choice of giving himself up or seeing his girlfriend put in one of the lower sea caves until the tide comes in. Oh, that'd be murder. Oh. That shouldn't bother you. You and Ward have been watching for a chance to murder me ever since we came to Black Rock. You know why, don't you? 
Because you've been starving us to death. For your own good, you fools. We've got seven months of winter ahead of us. If the food gives out before we can leave here next summer, we'll die by slow starvation. <laughs> that is just how you will die. Unless you tell me the hiding place of the two million dollars, Burkett. The shadow. He's here in the sea cave. He followed us. Well, I'm glad you're here, Shadow. Now we can settle this. I'll make a bargain with you. The shadow doesn't bargain with criminals, Burkett. I've got the girl who came with you. There she is. Look at her. I'll give you two minutes to come out of the shadows and give yourself up. Give myself up to be murdered? Drowned in the lower sea caves? Oh, no, Burkett. You have no choice. We'll drown the girl. Burkett, listen to me. Would you have the murder of an innocent girl on your conscience in your last days and hours when you are slowly starving to death on this barren island? You can't scare us, Shadow. We've plenty of food. <laughs> you had plenty of food, Burkett. But look at it now. Look at the chests of food you have so carefully hoarded. Look at them. Burkett, look. Yeah? The locks are smashed. The chests have been opened. What? Burkett, look. The flour. The dried meat. It's soaked. It's soaked with our kerosene. Look, this chest is the same. We can't eat it. But what about the canned stuff? The canned stuff, he couldn't spoil that. Get away from those cases, Martin. No, you don't. You're not going to keep what's left for yourself. I'm taking the rest of this food and I'm going to the mainland now. Put down that case, Martin. Put it down, I tell you. You ain't going to starve me to death, you crooked rat. All right, Martin, you won't starve to death, no. You won't starve. Oh! Push it. You didn't even give him a chance. You shot him in cold blood. You'll do the same to me if I let you. Don't be a fool, Ward. Put down that gun. Uh, now, listen, there's enough food for us, and I need you. If I couldn't stay here alone, I'd go crazy. There's only food enough for one man, Burkett. And I'm going to be that man. No, you don't, Ward. There you go. You wing me. Wing me, you devil. Go on, finish the job. Finish me. Better than starving to death. I had enough for that. Ward. Ward, I only meant to scare you. <laughs> Ward is not dead, Burkett. Your bullet's in his shoulder. Shock, hunger, that's all. Now, what kind of a bargain will you make? I make no bargains with you, Shadow. Remember, I've still got the girl. No, Burkett. She's gone. Look on the cot. Her ropes are cut. She's gone. Gone? You, you cut her loose. yes. While you fought each other. If I could only see you... You'll I... never live to see another human face if you don't give yourself up. No. No, I've sacrificed everything with that two million dollars and I'll never give it up. You've got to give it up, Burkett. You want to stay here starving, freezing to death for nothing? Now, tell me where have you hidden the money? No. No. Tell me, I say. Where is the money you stole from the thousands of poor and trusting people you betrayed? Oh, you'll never get it. They'll never get it. Burkett... Ward knew, Martin knew, but you don't seem to realize I have the power to make you obey me. Don't move, Burkett. That's it. Stare into space. Keep staring into the shadows. No! No! Drop that gun, Burkett. Drop that gun. Your fingers can't hold it. Can't hold it. Drop that gun. Drop it. Now. Where have you hidden the money? Under the chest. <laughs> You're a fool, Burkett. Like all criminals. You've told me what I want to know. Margo. Yes? Margo, take the ropes from the cot. Tie Burkett's hands behind him. He can't move. All right, Shadow. Hurry, Margo, hurry. Draw his hands behind his back. Tie them. Tight. Tight. Now. Now, Margo, get out. Get back to the plane. Hurry, hurry. <laughs> no, no, Shadow. Shadow, don't. Don't leave me here to die. I'll give up the money. I'll go back and stand trial. Yes, Burkett, you'll give up the money that was never yours. You'll go back and stand trial, both you and Ward. I've wrecked your boats. You can't escape. And tomorrow, a Coast Guard cutter of the North Atlantic Ice Patrol will pick you up. They'll take you back to pay for your crimes. <laughs> Your message? I have the plane's radio tuned in on their regular band. 
They'll notify their shore base. They're proceeding to Black Rock. Ice Patrol Cutter calling. There it is now. Hello? Hello? Ice Patrol Cutter proceeding to Black Rock under force draft. Proceeding to Black Rock under force draft. They believe you, Lamont. They believe the shadow. Set your course homeward, Margot. Our job is finished. Oh, Lamont, think what it means. All those poor people will get their money back. They won't suffer. They won't lose their homes. And Mr. Harvey's name will be cleared. Yes, Margot. And this will be a warning to others that even the best laid plans of the smartest criminals can fail. There is no perfect crime. Before the shadow returned, here's John Barclay, Blue Coal's heating expert, with some helpful hints on the firing and care of your furnace. Mr. Barclay. Thank you, Ken Roberts, and good evening, friends. Many people use ashes when they bank their furnace fires. That's an old-fashioned practice, and it can cause plenty of trouble besides giving you unsatisfactory heat. Ashes thrown on top of a coal fire act like a wet blanket. They prevent air from coming up through the fire bed, overheat the grate, and cause a solid mass of clinkers. Remember, the only place for ashes is the fu- in the furnace is the ash pit. Always bank your fire with fresh coal. If you have any particular heating problems, get in touch with your blue coal dealer. Ask him to send a John Barclay serviceman to inspect and check over your furnace. These men are expertly trained to solve your heating problems, and they'll show you how to get better heating results from your furnace at no obligation on your part. I thank you. Today's Shadow Story has been a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear on the Shadow Magazine, now on sale at your local newsstand. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. (laughs) The weed of crime. does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> At this time, Blue Coal wants to offer its sincere praise for the work of the American Red Cross, which is now entering on its annual drive. We feel sure all our listeners will agree that the Red Cross deserves the faithful support of one and all. Let's all do our part in helping this great organization. Next week, same time, same station, Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite, will again present The Shadow. Be sure to listen, and be sure to burn Blue Coal, the solid fuel for solid comfort.